Rub up your engines! Well, no surprise, a Kia dealer has to pay a million dollars back to its people for bogus charges selling them cars. Kia is notorious for this, and a dealership in Maryland got caught. The local attorney general looked into it and found out they had frauded people for over a million bucks. It's called Coons Kia in Maryland. They charged hidden fees not showing their advertising price, and extra freight charges to deliver it, even though the shipping cost was already included in the advertised price. They can only charge 10 taxes and title fees in the advertised prices. It's always been that way, now they got to watch them even closer, because they cheated the rule. Now the company has promised they'll return the money to the people. Yeah, I'd love to follow up on this one, but they got to pay over a million bucks back, plus they had to pay a hundred grand to the government to pay for the cost of the investigation into how fraudulent this company was. Here we go again with Kia. I wouldn't buy one anyways, but they have history of sleazy dealerships. The company obviously doesn't care, it's allowing these people to do business. Business. They're not doing anything about it. The Attorney General of Maryland had to go and get involved in it to give the people their money back. So, hey, get even with these people. Don't buy their cars. They didn't have to deal with all this nonsense. Well, boo hoo, the father son duo that run Carvana. Well, they've lost 60% of their value because the stock's going, and that's since the start of 2022. So they're down $4.1 billion. As I said numerous times, people invest in these companies, they don't even know what they're investing in. Cars and gumball machines, what a great idea. They deliver to you, I'll invest in that company, not knowing anything about the automobile business. You get a big giant dealership, screw people over for all the problem that Carvana's had, they're selling cars to people that don't have titles. Those companies, go so fast. The whole thing is they buy used cars and then sell them. They have a massive turnover of well over a billion dollars a car each year, right? So they're in, they're out. They don't know anything about them. Of course there's going to be problems. And I forecasted the downfall of this company a long time ago. It's kind of obvious. There are companies that were like that before that expanded too fast, like Your Car Co that was run by one of the biggest pawn stores in the country. And they were humongous for a while, decades ago, then they collapsed because it was so much fraud. There's so much dirt in used car business anyway. And if you turn it to a larger corporation with billionaires running it, it's even more open to fraud and corruption and just plain overvaluation. And now they rode the coronavirus ride because, oh, nobody wants to go out, so they'll deliver the car to you. But let me tell you, just their whole process. Guy in Clarksville, Tennessee, this summer, he sold his car to him. He got what he paid for the car and he drove it for like three, four years. And I said, well, what did they do? He said, you know, they didn't even start it up. They just walked around, looked to make sure it wasn't smashed, handed me a check, towed it on the truck, and took it away. If that's their process of checking out cars, you're buying a car from them. They don't know anything about it, and they don't pay the guys that pick up the cars all that much money, so they're not loyal to the company. Why should they care? They're not getting paid that much for doing this dirty job of picking them up and taking them off. The whole thing is kind of rotten from the core, and I'm glad that the price is going down. It's just absurd that they somebody takes some idea, oh, great idea, they all put their money in it, and they're like, where'd the money go? Yeah, well, 60% of it's gone now since 2022, and we're only talking about January, February, March, and some of April. That's why I lose a lot of money that way. BPM says I have a clicking noise coming from the right front wheel of my 07 Honda Civic. If I spin the wheel with the car jacked up, I hear the noise. The car handles fine, but it's loud. I can just about guarantee you what it is. Your CV outer joint is wearing out. Cars have those are front wheel drive. So you have a drive shaft on the left and a drive shaft on the right. They're called the drive axles. They're technically called half shafts because there's one on each side, right? It's one half, the other half makes one. Each end of the shaft has a universal joint, one on the inside by the tranny and one on the outside by the wheel. Your outside one is obviously wearing out because when they wear out, they clackety clackety clack like a horse on dry pavement with horseshoes. They just wear out and that's exactly what they do. Now the car will work perfectly fine. You won't notice anything except you'll hear the clackety clack. Eventually it will break and then the car won't go anywhere because when that joint breaks then the drive shaft will spin on the inside, but it's broken at the wheel, so it doesn't spin the wheel. And since cars have what are called differentials, what will happen is that'll spin, uh, say if it's the right side, and the left side won't do anything. It's 
not like you'll have drive on the left and no drive on the right. You have no drive at all. The car won't go anywhere. So, I mean, if you're worried, put in a CV shift. You can get brand new ones at Discount Auto Parts store for a car like that for like 79 bucks. They don't cost that much. Watch my videos. They're not that hard to replace if you got some simple tools. Don't get ripped off by a guy who's going to say, well, the dealer parts are uh, $590. You're going to charge $300 to put it on. No. It can be done yourself and you can get new ones for like 79 bucks. Santa Fe 11 says, I have a 2011 Hyundai Santa Fe that has multiple codes. You think it could be the PCM or the ECM? I have all these codes and I took it to a mechanic and he says, well, I think it's your PCM. What do you think? Here's one thing you have to understand. Your computer system is connected to all the sensors using fancy bus lines. Not like the bus you ride, but computer bus lines. So there's all kinds of information flying around. Something as simple as one bad sensor can cause all those codes to pop up. I see it all the time. Time. One time I had a Honda just like that. You know what was wrong with it? It had a bad crankshaft position sensor and that fixed the whole thing. You got all these codes, but you want to start with. I got a video fixing a car with multiple trouble codes. Have the computer reset. Get a scan tool and says erase code. Yes, yes, it'll erase them. Take it for a drive. See what code pops up first. That's how I fixed that other Honda. The first code to pop up was a crank sensor code. So I replaced that, fixed the car, never had any more problems. You get ghost codes. When one code pops, a lot of times it'll start popping a bunch of other codes because it's shorting out the computer system. The computer gets totally confused and then starts spitting out all these other codes. So anytime you got a whole bunch of codes, erase them all, take it for a quick drive, wait until you get codes. The scan tool will show you codes as they pop up, gives live data. Then when you say, okay, this one popped, let's fix that one first. And often it will fix the whole problem. Mercedes Benz is overpriced, says, how do you replace an EGR vacuum solenoid? Toyota Highlander. They said it's the EGR solenoid has gone bad. How do I replace it? I checked the hoses and they look fine. Okay. Well, unfortunately, you can't buy that. You got to buy the whole EGR assembly. They cost a fortune on Toyotas. That's just the way that it goes. They cost a whole bunch of money. Now, price it at the dealer. They're generally the only place that sell it. Now, if you can find an aftermarket one, go ahead and give it a try. Just don't buy an aftermarket one from China. It probably won't work. And of course, realize Toyota makes pretty good products. So, maybe go to a junkyard. If they want, say, 500 bucks at the dealer, go to a junkyard. There's probably plenty of them in a junkyard. They'll sell you one for probably 25 bucks. And they do last an awful long time, so you could get a used one and try that. I mean, try the Toyota dealer first. You never know. But from my experience, those things cost a fortune. You can't fix them. You just have to replace them. They just bolt on and off. Now, replacing it, though, is one problem. They bolt on and off. That part's easy, where it bolts onto the engine. But the exhaust gas comes through a metal line that bolts onto the EGR. And let me tell you something. And that is heck to get off because they're often different types of metal and they kind of rust weld themselves on. It can be very hard getting that pipe off on the engine. Let me tell you, I've broken many of them off. Sometimes they just break when you take them apart. If it is all rusted, spray it with WD-40. Let it soak overnight. Then try getting it with big wrenches. So that'll give you a better chance of not snapping something off. Bree Dog 69 says, I have a truck that won't start a crank. It's an 07 Silverado with 191,000 miles. Dome light wouldn't turn on. Truck won't crank or start. Friend says, hey, the PCM's bad. So bought a PCM program, put it in, and the same thing. Now, after 30 minutes, all of a sudden it had power and it turned on. But then it happens again and now it won't start again. Help. I'm assuming either your friend diagnosed it wrong or you have serious electrical problem. Maybe destroyed the old computer. Maybe not. I'll never know. You know, what came first, the chicken or the egg? If you do have a short, of course, it can destroy the computer. But if you put a new computer in, guess what? That short will fastly destroy the new computer and they put the computer in a stupid thing worked and now it doesn't it could be that that has a short yes and it destroyed the computer and now you're back to square one and you wasted your money on a computer you're gonna have to go to an expert in electronic diagnosis on GMs he's gonna have to go through the whole stupid thing and find out what is shorting out something's shorting out because you had nothing all of a sudden you did then 30 minutes later you didn't and it won't even crank over you got a mass of what's called a dead short because it's shorting out when you're not running the car now dead shorts usually aren't that hard to 
find. I would start with a good mechanic who knows what he's doing. Your friend may have just wasted your money on a PCM because he'd have to go through the whole car to find a short, then say, here's the short, it's fixed. Maybe the car would have started, or maybe he would have fixed the short and found out, yes, the PCM was bad. But if that is the case and there is a short, you probably just ruined the new PCM because it wasn't diagnosed correctly. You have to find the short first. You don't just, well, I'll put it on a computer. Computer's the last thing you ever do after everything else is checked. Because if there's a short anywhere, ruins the computer. If all you do is put it in a computer, guess what? It'll short that out too. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.